Today's show is brought to you by 3C. Comprehensive Cannabis Consulting helps clients design, build, and optimize their cannabis business from initial assessment and planning through operationalization and ongoing management. To learn more about how their services are tailored to meet the unique goals and objectives of each of their clients, go to 3ccannabis.com. And for a limited time, 3C is giving all MJ Bulls listeners an additional 10% off their fees just for mentioning that you heard it on the show. Go to 3ccannabis.com. It doesn't matter the credit score. The key thing, as long as you have the assets that will be able to cover that amount that you're requesting. So if you want a $250,000 asset-based loan, well, you got to have enough assets on hand. Is it your home? Is it your car? Is it some land? Do you have investments in a building? Do you making some type of other way that you're retrieving money? Is it a 401k? Do you have some stock? From Bumminet Media, it's the MJ Bulls Podcast, a show about raising cannabis capital. I'm Dan Humiston, and on today's show, how this cannabis entrepreneur is connecting companies looking for asset-based loans with lenders willing to loan money to cannabis businesses. Today, the Cannabis Investor Spotlight is shining on Alan Diabru, CEO of Weed Lending Net. Alan, thanks for being on the MJ Bulls podcast. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it very much. Well, there's tons of capital flowing into the cannabis industry, but most of it seems like it's coming in the form of investments. But up until recently, it was nearly impossible for cannabis businesses to get loans. Why do you think that was? Well, a lot of two, the Federal Regulatory Commission, of course, setting up and saying no, FDIC, no, the bank, and our, of course, our glorious government, Uncle Sam. The way the thought is, a lot of people don't know that you can and have been able to get a asset-based loan for a long time. It's just been loosening up slowly, but slowly, uh, more and more every day. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you sort of play that role where you find the cannabis companies that's looking for a loan, and then you match them with the right loan company. Can you maybe elaborate a little bit more on exactly how you, how you do that deal? What I deal with is asset-based loans. Right now, I have about 100 different lenders in the asset-based lending, and that's what I deal with, again, asset-based lending. It doesn't matter the credit score. The key thing is as long as you have the assets that will be able to cover that amount that you're requesting. So if you want a $250,000 asset-based loan, well, you got to have enough assets on hand. Is it your home? Is it your car? Is it some land? Do you have investments in a building? Do you making some type of other way that you're retrieving money? Is it a 401k? Do you have some stock? Those are all viable assets that my lenders would look at. Your credit score is secondary, but it is also very important. The better the credit score, still a lower rate. It's the same process as getting a car or a home. It's just a little bit more intricate. You need to have more documentation. And being in this industry, you're going to have to make sure that you cover all the bases. Make sure you're a legitimate company with an EIN or TIN based here in the United States or SSN. But the key thing is that asset-based loan is they want to see that you pay it back. They don't want to own your stuff. They want to know you can pay back the loan. Will it be, again, a higher rate? Yeah. What the rate would be? Maybe anywhere from 4.5 if you're lucky and as high as 20%. I don't see too many of my asset-based lenders go past 20% because I don't do business with them. They're called sharks. They're called loan sharks, yeah. You have 100 institutional lenders that would take whatever the asset is as collateral on the loan, and then based on the type of business or the type of collateral, that would help make the decision as to what the loan rate would be and the term. Is that how it works? Basically, yes. So if you're a grow operation or dispensary startup, and then you're going to want to find or at least find a building that you want to purchase a building. You want to make sure that purchase of that building for that grow operation can offset and then some the request. How much the rate, the spread, the difference is, it really depends. Each loan is different. Each scenario is different. Just know there's a lot of paperwork. I'm familiar with Small Business Administration or SBA loans, and I remember closing those, and there were just mountains of paper, mountains of paper. Yeah. Loans are complicated, but not a lot more complicated than somebody making an investment in your company. There's a lot of paperwork in all deals, just tying it all together. Now, I do want to stress one key thing that makes us different than the VC folks, the angel investors, and the Shark Tank folks as well is this. Uh, my lenders don't deal with pitch deck. They don't want to look at pitch deck. They want to see actual numbers, your projections, your profit and loss. 
put your projections of the future as well. They want to know that you're going to be stable. They want to know they're going to get paid. I want to take a minute to tell everyone about an exciting free opportunity that one of our former guests, Good Harvest Company, is offering retail operators and cannabis brand managers in the adult use market. Good Harvest Company is preparing to launch their platform, which uses customers' buying and shopping behaviors to help brands effectively reach their customers. And for a limited time, Good Harvest Company will offer participating companies free access to their data in return for their feedback. To learn more, go to goodharvest.co. Talk to me about term length. Is that pretty much set? Well, that's going to be set between the person trying to get the loan and that lender. Some people may need a short-term equipment loan, six months to a year and a half. Yes, that's very possible. Three years on equipment, very possible. On residential real estate, maybe depends if you have a lot of cash to put down. And that's the key thing that a lot of lenders are going to want to see. They're going to want to see skin in the game. It doesn't matter how much money you've already put in the past. They want to know how much money you're going to have to put it down to go forward with. So if you come to them as a dreamer, as they like to call it, I believe in dreams too, but realistically, you're still going to need money to get the lender motivated as well as those assets. So if you're going to try to buy some real estate, you better have 20 to 30 to 40% they're going to want to see to have you cash on hand to make them want to jump out of their pocket and hand start handing you that money. Well, it's a lot of information Like you said, there's a lot of information needs to be put in. It's a little bit different play than going for an investment from a venture capitalist. You have to approach it differently. I think that's an important takeaway from this conversation is you have to approach it a little bit differently. We will have all of Alan's information and all of Weed Lending Net's information on the MJ Bulls website. So Alan, thanks for being on the MJ Bulls podcast. This is an area that should be available to everybody, loans in the cannabis industry, but it's nice to see that the loan money is starting to loosen up a little bit. But you know, all I can say is is whether it be BC or whether it be in my own uh, asset-based world, either case, or whether it be in the regular business world, always do your checking on the people, make sure they've been around, find the right ones, and I say do your due diligence. Always do due diligence. Well, that's good advice no matter what you're doing when it comes to taking on partners or taking on investments. That's always good advice. So thanks, Alan. It's good talking to you and good luck. All right. Thank you very much, sir. You have a great day, Dan. You too. Let me take a second to thank Trevitt Hill for sponsoring today's show. Cannabis investors expect big returns from the companies that they invest in. Unfortunately, not all cannabis investments succeed. Trevitt Hill's management team works with investors to help turn around or in some cases purchased, they're underperforming portfolio companies. To learn more, go to trevithill.com. Thanks for listening to the MJ Bulls podcast. To learn more about today's guest or to become a guest, visit our website at mjbulls.com. Today's show was produced by Bumminit Media with original music composed by Jamie Humiston. I'm Dan Humiston, and you've been listening to the MJ Bulls podcast.